basic tactical unit of air combat maneuvering is the two-fighter element. Compared with a single aircraft, this compact team offers maximum protection against surprise with a minimum loss of maneuverability. Let's look at a single fighter for a moment. Its areas of greatest vulnerability, areas where the pilot cannot see, are from 5.30 to 6.30 low and the general area beneath the aircraft. Now let's add the important second member of the element, the wingman. This is his fighting position. About 600 feet back in the element leader's 60 degree maximum performance cone. From this vantage point, he can see what the leader cannot, the area below and behind. Thus protected, the leader can now concentrate on the primary purpose of all flight tactics, offensive action. When action develops, the wingman's duties are threefold. First, he watches the leader's three o'clock area to nine o'clock area and apprises him of attacking enemy aircraft. Second, he keeps out of the leader's way. Third, he maneuvers to stay with the leader. This means both horizontal and vertical movement to keep his fuselage aligned with the leaders at all times. He stays out of the in-trail position unless forced there by maximum performance maneuvers. The wingman is primarily the defensive member of the fighting element. The leader is responsible for the offensive action. Let's see how the element works as a team in air combat maneuvering. The leader plans his attack to achieve surprise if possible. And if surprise can be accomplished, he'll concentrate on the enemy leader. But if the enemy is aware of the attack, the enemy wingman gets first attention. In either case, the friendly leader tempers the attack with enough caution to avoid what the enemy will immediately be looking for, the overshoot. The enemy may resort to the defensive split. If so, the attacking element combines to drive the enemy wingman down and away from his leader. They do this without sacrificing airspeed advantage. Then they shift the attack to the enemy leader before reaching a line abreast position. The experienced wingman momentarily continues his attack on the enemy wingman and then reverses to support his leader. The tactic is designed to divide the enemy and destroy him singly. With the enemy wingman out of the fight, the element now concentrates on the enemy leader, and that makes one less to deal with. Offensive action is that simple. Split them up and work on them one at a time. From this, you can see the advantage of working together. When you are on the defensive, your first defensive action is the hard turn. The objective is an overshoot through lateral separation. When separation is achieved, the element reverses and maneuvers to the six o'clock position. If the rate of overshoot is relatively slow, the element reverses. On the initial reversal, the wingman goes high in a vertical split. As the friendly leader scissors the attacking element, 
the friendly wingman drops down to support. In situations where lateral separation cannot be achieved, the defending element uses the defensive split. The wingman continues the break in a slight nose-down attitude to preserve maneuvering airspeed. The leader pulls high, and the attackers are forced to make a choice. To take the low man, to take the high man, to split, or to shift from the low man to the high man. Let's see these one at a time. If they take the low man, he maneuvers as a single aircraft, attempting to force an overshoot. The friendly leader then drops down and attacks the enemy element from behind. If the attacking element selects the high man, the friendly wingman automatically reverses as the attackers slide past. The friendly leader makes a high G roll underneath and fights as a single aircraft. The friendly wingman maneuvers to support his leader. If the attacking element splits, one on one, the friendly aircraft fight individually to destroy the attackers. The defenders should not attempt supporting action until they have successfully eluded or destroyed their individual attackers. Only then should they rejoin. Now, back to the original attack again. If the attackers switch from low man to high man, the friendly wingman makes a nose high reversal as soon as the shift is apparent. The friendly leader breaks down into the attack and maneuvers as a single ship to gain an offensive advantage. The friendly wingman attempts to support his leader by completing the sandwich. By now, you can easily see why a thorough knowledge of basic fighter maneuvers is essential to the combat unit. It is only when both members of the element have this basic professional knowledge that they can actually attack superior numbers with reasonable chance of success. Let's see how such a combat-ready element would attack a flight of four. The primary target is the high element. Ideally, the attack should be made from the low element side. Thus, the high element can be forced to turn behind the leader. When he is well committed to this defensive maneuver, the attack then switches to the lead element. With the enemy flight breaking in the same direction, the friendly force can now press its attack on the trailing element. But let's go back a moment to where the attack switched from the high to the low element. If the enemy reverses at this point, the friendly element pulls high while it still has airspeed advantage. It then positions itself behind the trailing element to continue the attack. Thus, basic maneuvering concepts are still applicable even when attacking a superior force. Basic concepts of air combat maneuvering become even more important when two elements operate together as a flight. 
Let's see how they apply to the Fluid Four, a modern fighting formation used extensively in Korea. The Fluid Four is designed around two offensive elements. The low element, with the flight leader ahead, and the high element, 10 to 35 degrees back on the down sun side. Its operating position is about 5,000 feet out to the side and about 2,000 feet above the lead element. From this position, it acts defensively to support the lead element or offensively to take on action that might be awkward or impossible for the lead element. Therefore, the element leader must be aggressive, experienced, and responsible. Else the advantage of this formation is lost. For the fluid four has definite advantages. On offense, for example, if the flight leader initiates an attack and, in turn, is attacked by enemy support, the fluid element can drop down to engage his attackers. So the formation has a very big defensive advantage while actually attacking the enemy. The versatility of the Fluid Four becomes apparent when the enemy makes an approach that is awkward for the lead element to handle. The Fluid Element, from its advantageous position, goes to the offensive immediately. The Lead Element maneuvers in support. The Fluid Four again proves itself when attacking another flight of four. If possible, the lead element initiates the attack on the enemy high element from the formation low element side. To save himself, the enemy high element breaks down into the attack. The enemy lead element naturally turns to support his second element and, in so doing, comes under attack from the friendly second element. But let's see what happens if the attack cannot be made from the enemy's low element side. The high element is still the first target. The friendly flight leader feints an attack at him to drive him into high performance evasion. Then he diverts the attack to the low element. The friendly second element follows him at a seven second interval in staggered train ready for a kill if the enemy second element reverses to support his lead. <laughs> Defense of the fluid four formation demands the greatest skill of all. When attacked by two, the action is simple, but it must be coordinated. The enemy will select the high formation, attacking out of the sun. The high element counters the attack by breaking into it and descending to the lead element's altitude. He, meanwhile, informs the flight leader of his action. While maneuvering to gain the advantage of his attacker, the element leader keeps a lookout for a second enemy element 
possibly following the first in train. If none appears, the flight leader's element gives him support by sandwiching the attackers. Let's examine another possibility when the fluid four is attacked by two. As the high element goes into defensive maneuver, the attackers may shift to the friendly low element. In this case, the friendly high element leader assures himself that there is not another attacker in train and then reverses to sandwich the enemy. Defense of the fluid four against an attack by four is more complex. When four enemy aircraft attack in train from the friendly high element side, the high element goes into a defensive turn. The enemy's best bet now is to shift the attack to the low element. With the enemy second element in train, the friendly second element dares not reverse, so it continues the defensive turn. Each friendly element must now operate independently until a double victory by one allows it to support the other. Remember that mutual support is the objective of flight tactics. It comes only with teamwork and the confidence of every pilot in the other members of his flight. So practice these flight tactics and plan your action. For fighter tactics are planned maneuvers that preclude trial and error in the big show. That is where every leader and his wingman bets his individual life on the collective ability of the team to outfly, outfight, and outlive a skillful enemy.